Big news, big news everyone! Alrighty, so initially this video was supposed to focus on something else, on how Takeda could be introduced early, how the anime might want to change the queen's personalities and other things, but then something weirdly curious popped up. Pew! This image right here appears to show which chapters will be adapted in each episode. I have no idea where this image came from, apparently it's supposed to be some sort of a leak but it could also just be something put together by a fan. So let's have a look at it, discuss its authenticity and see what's going on, because I wouldn't say I like the look of it. Hey hey hey, it's me from the future. Well to no one's surprise, I didn't manage to finish the video on time and the third episode released. Which might be a good thing, because while the first two episodes correlate 100% with the chapters mentioned in this image, the third episode does not. According to this image, the third episode should have also covered chapter 46, but the adaptation didn't even touch a panel from that chapter. In other words, this image is fake news. I cut out this section of the video but kept the beginning just so you can have a look at the image yourselves. However, considering the pacing of the anime, the content that is implied to be adapted and something very interesting regarding the upcoming visual novel, and I'll get into that in a minute, I'd say this image is still a fairly educated assumption. If the anime does in fact plan to adapt all the way to chapter 86 without skipping any more content, that would be quite the breakneck pace. 41 chapters left for 9 episodes, there's no way they could adapt this without cutting a bunch of scenes, even if they just want to cram all the essential parts of each arc in the remaining episodes. Because, for example, while the Sisters War arc has only 9 chapters, it's also jam-packed with quite a lot of scenes, might actually be the densest arc in terms of things that happen throughout it. Very hard to squeeze everything without cutting a fair amount. But while the pacing is a valid concern, there might be some potentially good news coming from this, and how good this news is depends on you. If the anime doesn't want to end this season on a cliffhanger with a bell kiss, it means mainly two things. The most foreseeable and common scenario would be a final season. There's a chance they might have been greenlighted for another season, thus disregarding a cliffhanger ending and encouraging the anime viewers to stick with the anime. The end of chapter 86 is actually quite a good place to conclude the season. It's where Lolicano is officially revealed to be Yotsuba and Rena Itsuki. Basically a reveal ending, which to be honest sounds alright if they manage to pull it off. Now, if we want to get a little bit sophisticated, I know a lot of you would die for alternative routes, the upcoming visual novel might come in handy. If you didn't know, a visual novel will release in Japan on March 25th. Keep this date in mind because it's really really important and is about the Queens and Futaro on an island for two weeks, lots of romancing with five different endings. Sounds great. Now, March 25th. The first episode of the anime officially released on January 7th in Japan. We get one episode per week, with the final episode, if there is no break, coming on March 25th. Conveniently, exactly when the visual novel releases, so it's clear they are connected. To what extent depends on the direction of the anime and I think we should have a pretty good view when the 7 goodbyes ends. It might just be a marketing strategy, you're fresh out of the anime and rush to purchase the visual novel, or they might actually get reckless and sell the visual novel as a sort of a sequel to the anime. But either way, a lot of people will be happy. On the sad news section, it seems Yotsuba's date and the living room game will indeed be skipped altogether at least for now… question mark? In the previous video I said that they might still adapt Yotsuba's date at a later stage. Maybe after 7 goodbyes, maybe put it together with Yotsuba's last exam sign, but the more I think about it, the more problematic it gets for the anime timeline. Especially since in the second episode they show the foreshadow of the Rena setup. Yotsuba listening to Itsuki and Futara's conversation, snapping that twig, running away, acting differently towards Futara when she saw him drenched, you know that deal, it was all kept. Which should also mean they don't plan on changing the bride? Question mark? But besides that, one thing that feels very weird is that when the queens move by themselves at the end of Seven Goodbyes, it happens in winter, during Christmas, a very symbolic time for big changes, and as we know, the queens and Futaro undergo a massive change. Now, Thanksgiving is obviously before Christmas and is also a huge symbolic holiday, especially in Japan where they specifically celebrate giving one another thanks. 
The point of Yotsuba's date is for Futaro to thank her for the good memories during the school trip, among other significant developments for the characters. The anime could still adapt the date without it being connected to Thanksgiving, but I think we can all see how that's a bit underwhelming and really missing the point of the date itself. So yeah, it's a concern. I guess they could also have it as an OVA, but where would that fall on the timeline? It feels cheap to see it as a flashback when it pretty much acted as the catalyst that pushed Yotsuba into doing the whole Rena thingy. She got too close to Futaro and she felt like that was unethical to her sisters. On the other hand, if the third season is actually a thing, it should start with Yotsuba's flashbacks and the date could somehow be implemented somewhere before or after. I don't know what the anime studio wants to do, it's been quite unpredictable. But on the bright side, confession in the living room could make a terrific OVA. An interesting thing I noticed in the anime, and I don't know if it's just me that gets this bizarre sensation, but doesn't it seem like the anime doesn't want to give the queens individual moments? Like they don't really want to emphasize them the way the manga did, or give them individually the spotlight. For example, let's take Itsuki's moon is beautiful scene. In the manga, she clearly wants Futaro to look at the moon. She points it once, tells him to look at it, then we get a beautiful close-up of Itsuki saying the line while looking at Futaro. Almost as if she said it to Futaro and wasn't a random remark. I'd say it definitely wasn't, but it's up to you. However, in the anime, it was literally just a random remark. She doesn't even look at him. In the manga, Itsuki also mentions the moon before they went for that night stroll, creating a connection there. Add the skip label Thanksgiving that focused on Yotsuba, and the living room game which focused on Miku and Ichika, and it feels bizarre. So yeah, I don't know, I'm waiting for Nino's turn to see how they handle it. Kaori, 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 I humbly ask you to give Nino's confessions justice. Thank you very much. But hopefully I'm just imagining things. Speaking of the anime, the voice acting was terrific in this second episode. Minase and Nori's cute sounds are something to die for. <laughs> and Matsuoka nailed every single line, really terrific. The pacing is still a bit too fast for my liking, but hey, no big deal. For now. Let's hope for the best. But man, they do tend to cut the wrong scenes. The third episode left out this page from Futaro and Rena's meeting, a parallel to their younger selves, showing they still have the same chemistry, even though, you know, these two are not the same person, but nevertheless, emphasizing how much Rena means to Futaro. Another scene, a bit unimportant to be honest, but one that helps maintain a nicer flow in the manga, is when Nino puts the cream puff into the oven, then goes on the balcony to call Futaro, which results in her forgetting about the cream puffs and getting them burned. A funny scene that shows Nino's infatuation with Kintaro and later Futaro. In the anime, they just kind of burned. As I said, not an important scene, but it's the little details that drew me in. Although the pacing of this episode improved slightly. Hey, 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 future me again! I have to say that I had quite a long section dedicated to that leaked fake image. It actually got me really fired up again, which I enjoyed very much, but unfortunately I had to cut it out entirely. A bit sad, but that's how it goes. There's no point in talking about something that's untrue. I hope the video doesn't feel disjointed, I tried my best, but my best was average. But well, thank you for watching.